All right, first we need to create a new subject, keep the defaults, and then import the MRI, which is on the desktop right now. Then we need to set the fiducials. You can either do it manually, or the easiest way is to just click on the link out here, the click here to compute MNI normalization. Select MAF8. takes roughly two minutes and now you can see that all the fiducials have been set Let's click on save next step is to import the CT so right click on the subject click on import CT choose the CT click on no we don't want to do scaling Select us for the transformation. Choose CT to MRI registration. We are using the CT to MRI plugin. We would want to do re-slicing and also clean the CT volume so that there are no wires hanging out outside the skull. This will take some time, roughly around six to ten minutes, depending on your system. So let me fast forward it for you. All right, so we have the CT registered to the MRI. You can play around with the data options slider on the left to get better visualization of the CT. The next step is to generate an isosurface, a threader a threshold or isosurface from the CT. So we just right click on the CT, click on CT segmentation, click on generate a threshold image from CT. This pops up a window wherein you need to give a rough threshold so that you can see the contacts. Currently we have set to be the mean of the white level and the max intensity from the histogram of the CT. So let it be let it be at the default value. And let's click on OK. As you can see, it gives a very good estimate of the contacts. Right, so now we have the MRI, the CT, and the ESO surface. The next step is to start the contact localization process. So we right click on the CT, click on SEG curve implantation. So this takes you to the functional tab and opens up an implantation folder with a blank channel file and also the MRI viewer and the uh, ESO surface. So the next step is to use this panel, the panel IEG, which, which will help you in creating all the electrodes and the contacts. So first of all, let's define an electrode. Let's say it's AH. I see there is no contacts out here. Now the first step is we zoom in and let's say we want to define this as an electrode. So you see it is, uh, is a, this particular contact is actually joined so maybe we can still separate it. So the way to do that is go back to the surface tab 
and make sure that the ISO surface is selected and you can decrease or increase that threshold to have a better visualization of the contacts so so if you increase it that means we will have less vertices and if you decrease the slider we will have more vertices so now we want to decrease the vertices we want to increase the slider so just showing you an example but let's say I want to increase it further, something around 3022. You can see we're getting there. It is still segregated. Now, if you zoom in, you can see that they have been separated. So, the next step is to add panel coordinates click on select and we choose this so that first you need to set the tip and the entry so the tip has to be on the uh, we move deeper into the brain so this should this will be the tip so as you can see it puts a crosshair on the center of the mesh of this particular blob and the corresponding value location gets updated in the MRI view. So you can see that the MRI view gets updated with this position. Now we go back to IEG tab and we define an electrode. So this is, let's say we can say it's like uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, like a strain contact electrode. So this is the PMT 10 contact with these specifications. So now we click on set tip. So now the tip has been set because it is it turns green. The next thing is to define the entry. So entry will be on the farther side of the brain. So now we again go back to coordinates, click on select. Now the you can see the crosser moves to the to do, uh, the different blob and the corresponding value gets updated in the MRI viewer. We go back to panel IEG and click on set skull entry. As you can see, the MRI viewer gets updated with the electrode and the contacts, but the 3D viewer has not been updated yet for that, and even the panel as well. So for that, you need to click on save in the MRI viewer and click on yes to save any other modifications. And then you can see that this channel file is updated. Now if you double click, this opens up the updated ESO surface and also updates the panel where you can see all the contacts. If you zoom in, you can see that you can visualize the contacts moving both in the MRI when viewer and the 3D viewer as you keep clicking on the contacts, you can also use this tab out here to view the coordinates in different coordinate space. All right, so let's say we want to update the location of a contact. So first let me display the labels of the contacts. So let's say you want to do it for H2. So you can see in the MRI viewer, this is that particular point. So the way to update that is, let's first change the view to just see the spheres. So we want this A2 contact to be at the center of this blob because it makes more sense out there. So doing that, Click on coordinates panel, click on select and choose that blob. Now you can see a crosshair has been plotted there indicating that the point now points of the new point in the MRI viewer is met. So there the way to do that is right click 
in the MRI viewer, click on electrodes and click on set electrode position. We want to update AH2. Click on OK. Now you can see the point got updated in the MRI viewer. But as you can see, the 3D figure has not been updated yet. So to do that, we click on save and click on yes for allowing all the modifications. Now if we reopen it, you can you zoom in, you can see that the contact has been updated and it has moved to this new location. Uh, yeah, okay. If I turn this into a sphere mode, you can see the shift in the position. You can do that for all the remaining contacts as well. So for now, another feature we can use is doing a line fitting. So if I click on contacts, oops, if I click on the electrode, choose contacts, and show line fit through contacts, so as you can see that we get an updated drop trajectory between these two points through the line. And we can hide it if you want to and again change the contract. The electrode model does not ideally follow the actual trajectory, or rather it just shows it as a straight line, but this is like a work in progress. Wherein we'll be able to model the actual uh, shift in the curvature of the electrode, but this is part of our future work.